Nuclear power plant workers are trying to tackle the flow of water into Fukushima Daiichi. They've begun pumping up groundwater to prevent it from reaching the crippled facility and becoming radioactive. Groundwater is flowing from nearby mountains into the reactor buildings and mixing with highly radioactive water. The bypass plan has been developed to reduce the amount of newly contaminated water. The Japanese government and the plant's operator, Tokyo Electric Power Company, started the new system after local fishermen agreed to the plan. TEPCO says groundwater will be pumped up from 12 wells over several days. The water will be stored in tanks. It will take about a month for private organizations to test the water's radiation levels. If the water meets safety standards set by the government and TEPCO, it will be released into the Pacific Ocean. Currently, the amount of contaminated water accumulating at the plant increases by about 400 tons every day. TEPCO says when the system is in full operation, the daily buildup will be reduced by up to 100 tons. The operator of the crippled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant says a damaged filter was behind the latest breakdown of a water decontamination system. Tokyo Electric Power Company workers shut down one of the three lines of the Advanced Liquid Processing System, or Alps last month after it stopped functioning properly. Company officials say resin had chipped off a filter that strains out metal materials, creating a six centimeter hole. They say the same type of filter is used in the other two lines and that they will check for similar problems. The Alps system is designed to remove most nuclear materials from contaminated water at the plant. The system is currently undergoing a test run. The utility aims to treat all the tainted water stored in tanks at the plant by the end of March of next year. But officials still do not know when the system will be brought into full operation. Japan's largest active volcano, Mount Aso, is getting a facelift after 50 years, a controlled burning to revive its pasture land. The fire quickly spreads, burning away grass and shrubs across the Nishi Yunoura pasture land on the northern slope. Mount Aso is on the southern island of Kyushu and one of the proud symbols of Kumamoto Prefecture, once known as the Land of Fire. Open burning has been practiced in the area for more than a thousand years. It's designed to help the growth of new grass shoots for animal grazing and get rid of insects that plague cattle and horses. A group of residents has revived the practice. The head of the group says they're working to turn the field into beautiful pasture land within five years' time. The grassy plain is one of Mount Aso's most famous sites. Pig farmers across Japan are struggling to get a virus under control that could pose a threat to the pork industry. The virus causes severe diarrhea in the animals. It's infected almost 200,000 pigs across the country and has left nearly 40,000 of them dead. The virus is known as porcine epidemic diarrhea, or PED. It causes severe dehydration and loss of appetite, but does not pose a threat to humans. Infection is usually fatal for piglets less than 10 days old. Officials at Japan's agriculture ministry say the disease was confirmed in the southern prefecture of Okinawa in October. It's since spread to more than 270 farms in 21 prefectures, mostly in southwestern Japan. It's the first time the virus has shown up in the country in seven years. A major pork wholesaler in Tokyo says the disease has not yet resulted in a drop in the amount of pork being shipped or a rise in prices. But the president of this supermarket says he's been told by a supplier that if the outbreak continues at the current rate, wholesale prices may go up by 20 to 30 percent. My store will do all it can to keep prices low, but there may be only so much I can do. The ministry is calling on breeders to use disinfectants at the entrance to their farms and to vaccinate their pigs. Northeastern Japan is still struggling to find jobs. The disaster three years ago destroyed much of the fishing and agricultural industry, and thousands of people had to leave the area. The situation has been particularly difficult for a vulnerable sector of the population. Now support centers are helping people with disabilities find work. NHK World's Maki Yajima has the story. About 30 kilometers north of the damaged nuclear plant is a support center for the disabled in the city of Minamisoma.
The workshop is called Beans. It's run by a local non-profit organization that finds work for people with intellectual disabilities or mental disorders. Currently, about 20 people are employed in jobs such as weaving or cleaning public facilities. The earthquake badly damaged their building and it had to close for a while. At the time, many of Minamisoma's disabled people were having difficulty coping. They were mentally unstable and their families were exhausted. We decided we had to reopen as soon as possible, before things reached breaking point for the families. Even though there was little work, Beans reopened to provide a comfortable place for people with disabilities and to reduce the burden on their families. Naoko Kitahata is in charge of creating new products at the facility and finding new clients. Our main goal is to make people with disabilities feel that they are needed and that they are contributing to society. Last October, Kitahata managed to land a new contract to repair baseballs for a well-known local high school team. The workers had to remove the stitching from old baseballs and then sew the covers back on. It takes about 20 minutes to finish each ball and requires great patience. Keiko Sakurai works on repairing the balls. She suffers from cerebral palsy. Her home was badly damaged in the disaster and her previous vocational support center had to relocate to a new area. She started working at Beans after the disaster. Sakurai is now living in temporary housing with her elderly mother. Before the disaster, they shared a home with Sakurai's brother and his family. So Sakurai was well taken care of. But her brother had to move away because of his work. It was a difficult time for her and her mother. Now Sakurai is enjoying her job at Beans. The instructor came to my temporary home and asked if I wanted to work with her. I was happy when she asked me. Finally, after months of hard work, the workers personally delivered 300 repaired balls to the high school. Thank you very much for repairing the baseballs. I see that they must have taken a long time to fix. We will take good care of them. I can't believe that those worn out balls have been fixed so beautifully and we can reuse them. I really feel so grateful. Doing a job with enthusiasm and pride and then being thanked in person. That's the best reward of all. It's important for us to be part of the community, to have a connection with it through our work. Everyone was so happy with the baseballs. I'll be supporting the team from now on. I hope we can all be friends. In the wake of the disaster, work is continuing to ensure that disabled people can contribute to their community and gain a sense of purpose. Makiyajima, NHK World, Fukushima. A famed Japanese photojournalist is back in the country capturing images of the aftermath of the March 2011 disaster. Noriko Hayashi has traveled the world taking pictures of human suffering through her lens. Her work has recently earned a top award internationally. NHK World's Shingo Doita spoke with Hayashi to learn more about her photography. A face changed forever by acid. This kind of retribution befalls women who reject a date or a marriage proposal in Pakistan.
Some people say they can't bear looking at my photos because their impact is so strong. But I don't feel that way. These girls actually spend every single day looking at their injured faces. In 2012, Hayashi witnessed a scene few photographers ever got to capture on camera. The precise moment a young girl is snatched away from her family. She is being abducted by the relatives of her future husband. Forced marriage remains a common practice in Kyrgyzstan and other Central Asian countries. 22-year-old Dinara suffered the same fate. She was kidnapped and forcibly wedded to a man she had met only a few times. Hayashi was able to spend two weeks with the couple and Dinara's in-laws. When I immerse myself in the life of my subjects, I naturally start developing a sense of responsibility. I feel I have to get the story right. Hayashi also works in Japan. Today, she's back in Fukushima Prefecture on the anniversary of the March 11th catastrophe. For the past three years, she's been covering the aftermath of the disaster. A police officer in protective clothing searches for the bodies of the missing near the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. These scenes were all shot beyond the boundary of the exclusion zone. They provide a graphic account of a situation few people have witnessed. Three years on, the visible impact of the tragedy has somewhat faded. The traces are buried on a deeper level inside the hearts of the survivors. Hayashi visits a temporary housing complex to meet with a man she first encountered six months ago. Hiroshi Maskura was forced to evacuate after the nuclear accident. He now shares a cramped apartment with his son. After the evacuation, Maskura's wife started suffering from depression. Her physical condition deteriorated, and she passed away. These days, Maskura finds solace in drawing. Among the sketches, is a portrait of his late spouse. There's nothing to do around here. Drawing these pictures is all I have. Hayashi prefers not to draw her camera until she develops a sense of trust with her subject. They decide to go to Maskra's home, about 10 kilometers from the nuclear plant. People from this area can make short visits, but they are not allowed to stay overnight. Passing the doorstep, Maskura comes back to life. He engages in a lively conversation with Hayashi. I'm not exclusively focused on shooting pictures, and the people I interact with can sense it. Once we start communicating beyond the simple framework of photographer and subject, I'm in the perfect situation to capture their natural expressions. <laughs> Waiting for a fleeting instant of truth, Hayashi quietly releases the shutter. She has yet to capture the kind of expression only she can bring out in people. Once they let her in. By completing this video, you have proven you are capable of filming, producing, and editing your own. We expect one video from you by the end of next week. Uh, we need to get subscribed and get this unity stronger and beat YouTube at their own game. Okay, that's what this is about. Like I say, go to the remix button, hit the remix button. That way you'll have this video and, and keep up with this. Otherwise, you know, YouTube's just going to control us, guys, and it's, it's really bad.